In today's video, we're going to take a look at how you can cut down trips from here and make a great coffee at home. Stay tuned. What's going on guys? It's Quasi Dog here and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how I prepare my morning coffees. So this guy here I've had since a little bit before Christmas and it's really cut down on the expense of going to my local Tim Hortons or Starbucks and I've learned and perfected over the last little while exactly how to use this properly and to make a great cup of coffee. So I'm going to run you guys through exactly what I do and maybe how to use it for yourself if you guys have this at home already or maybe thinking of picking one up. We're going to sort of speed run through this. It's not necessarily completely step to step. We'll talk about some base fundamentals and what I think is important for you guys to do when you're making your coffee at home. But let's just go ahead and get things started. So the machine itself is plugged in. You're going to want to unplug this after every time you're done using it but it's plugged in and in the top up here, we have a fresh tank of water. I take it out, but it's already warm. The biggest thing for me is I find there is quite a taste difference and a quality difference when you swap this water out before every cup of coffee. If you're making two back to back, not a big deal, but if it sat for more than a couple of hours, dump it out and get some fresh cold water. Next, we're gonna go over the handle itself and you guys can see that here, I believe. So with the handle, I actually have the double shot in there right now and I'm using some very, very fine ground espresso beans. Now, I don't have a grinder. I just kind of buy mine from the store and I'm cheap. I actually just buy whatever's on sale. You guys can see the, uh, the percentage off sticker there, but it just goes to show that if you do this properly, you don't need to buy expensive beans. You can pull a pretty good drip out of almost anything. So what we're gonna do is when you put your beans in, the big thing to concentrate on is to make sure that your handle is completely bone dry. Any little bit of moisture, whether it's wet or damp, it will start to affect the beans as you've laid them in the bottom and will make your drip uneven. You're gonna take your tamper and you're just gonna push this down a little bit. They say that anywhere between five and eight pounds of pressure is really all you need. But what you're doing is you're just making a nice smooth surface for your water to kind of fall through and pool. If it's uneven, it's going to cause you to pull your drip all from one side and it's going to result in either a loss of flavor or maybe even no flavor at all. You're going to clean that off on the top, making sure there's nothing there. And that's a pretty good tamp. Now we're going to take this guy. And of course, it's gonna go right under here. But the one thing that I like to do to make sure that there's no old cold water in the machine is we just wanna turn it on and run a very quick cycle. It's just water, it's not gonna be very messy. So we're gonna run that. You guys are gonna hear that the pump is going and if you can see that, it's now spitting out water. So we know that the next pull that we get is going to be nice hot water going through the bean. So we can reach down here lock the handle in place, and you really only want to turn it until the handle's straight. If you overturn it and make it too tight, you're going to make the machine work overtime, and that's not a good thing for the machine, and just not a good thing for your coffee either. Now, the mugs that I tend to use, which are these guys right here, they are too big for the machine, so I end up just using these little bowls. Now, the thing I like about pulling a drip into a bowl like this is you can actually see the crema and you can see all the way through it. So if you guys want to pay attention to that, but you don't want a second pour afterwards, easiest thing for you to do is just grab a, a small uh, see-through mug, put that under there, and we're gonna start our first pull. So we're just gonna turn that handle, it's gonna crank through, and now you want to have this drip for I would say about 20 seconds. You're not making a full coffee when you're making a cappuccino or a latte. And what people tend to do early on is try to fill their cup with just the espresso. And that's really not your intent. You're gonna water it way down. So you're gonna pay attention to the crema and you're gonna pay attention to the bean and the drip here. And when you notice that the drip starts either uh, wavering uneven or starts to get a little bit transparent, that's when you're gonna stop. And we should probably be pretty good 
right about there. Now, the next thing I did a lot of the time when I was first using this machine was I was actually taking my coffee off too early. Once we activate and start using the steam wand, that will cause a little bit of condensation to go through here as well. So I'm going to leave my container here to catch any of the other mess that might come through. So I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna get my coffee and my little cheat ingredient that I'm gonna show you guys, and then I'll show you how to make your milk. All right, so milk, pretty straightforward. I use 1% and this is my little cheat ingredient. So this is uh, vanilla silk almond milk. And the reason why I use this is I like a vanilla latte and at least in the Canadian market, it's really hard to find or import latte syrups cost effectively. So I end up just using this. So we're gonna take our container here. This is again, what you're gonna steam or froth your milk in. And I probably can't show you guys the inside very well, but just gonna put in some milk. I mean, if you do too much, it's not a big deal compared to if you do too little. And then we're gonna put our almond milk in here as well. Whoa. And that should be enough. Now again, there's a couple of things that you're gonna to wanna to do when you make your milk as well. So we're gonna move this stuff off to the side, put my lids back on, hear my dog walking around. It's the middle of the day. Why not make a video, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take this little attachment off right here. So this is just a froth extender. It allows you to actually get to the bottom of the cup a little bit easier, but I find it cuts down a lot of the pressure. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna use the actual small part right here on the steam wand, and that's gonna circulate your milk and really cut down on a lot of the work that you have to do. So we'll notice throughout this narration, our heat light has gone off, which means it's ready for the milk, but before we put this guy under there, same as before, we're gonna actually wanna activate the wand and we're gonna wanna cycle through all of that old water that's gonna come out. And I know the angle's not that great, but you guys can see that going now. So now it's spitting out some steam. We can close that off. And when you hold your actual uh, frothing tin or container, you're gonna wanna hold it exactly like this or in some variation of this. I would make the mistake of holding it like this and you'd think that's the way it is because there's a handle, right? But you want to feel for your actual temperature to make sure that you're not burning whatever material it is that you're, you're frothing or steaming. So we're gonna put this right in here and we're gonna begin the process of steaming the milk. Gets a little loud, my apologies. And until the milk actually has enough velocity or enough, I should say the steam has enough velocity to start circulating the milk, just make some gentle rotations with the cup just to make sure that you're not burning or concentrating heat at one spot. This is loud! There. So that should be good enough for me to talk over maybe. Uh, the biggest thing to mention as well is you want to insert the wand only a couple of centimeters below the surface of the milk and that's going to allow it to circulate. Maybe I'll tell you that again in a second. All right, so in case you guys couldn't hear me before, um, again, the biggest thing that you wanna do is hold your wand only a couple of centimeters below the actual surface area of your milk, and that's gonna allow the steam to actually circulate the milk for you. If you go too high, 
you're going to actually make too many bubbles. And if you go too low, then you're really just warming up the bottom of the cup and your hand. And I don't want to say you want to burn yourself, but your hand almost needs to get uncomfortably hot. And at that point, you know that your temperature is just about right for the milk. So now, I don't know if you guys can notice, but we've had a couple of drips throughout this process. And that's why I always leave this directly underneath. So it's safe to give this one more quick crank. Makes a small amount of mess, but it's only water. And you really want to spit the milk out of that frothing tip. And we're going to clean that afterwards as well. But now we're going to take your espresso. This is a double shot, maybe even a little bit more than a double shot, but the creme is really nice. And we're going to pour it into your mug of choice. And I wish I actually had, you know what? I'm not going to put it in the mug. I'm going to show you guys if I can. Actually adding the milk right in here. So you want to start a little high and your regular warm milk's going to go in. And now we're starting to get that froth coming up to the surface. There we go. Now I'm no artist. I can't make any designs or anything, but that is a nice creamy cup of coffee. Ah, it's hot too. Oh, that's so rich. Set that down without spilling it. So from start to finish, Kind of a long video just to make a cup of coffee, but there wasn't a whole lot of really good tutorials on this guy. So I wanted to show you from start to finish kind of best practices, how your poles and your steams work. Um, the big thing is also just making sure that you're running everything through before you actually make your poles. And if I can show you guys here, you know it's a good pull when your beans are pretty much bone dry or your ground. So we're getting a little bit of drip out of there, but it's like a Dairy Queen blizzard. Nothing's coming out. There's no water on the top. Everything filtered through that beautifully. And if you make any mistakes like having this wet or maybe pulling too long or anything like that, these are gonna be soupy and this is gonna have a lot of water left on top of it. And that's what you want to avoid. So you know you've made a good cup when this guy here is bone dry and you can turn it upside down. I just poured that all over myself. But it's a good cup of coffee. And that's gonna wrap up this video, guys. So if you liked it or saw any value in it at all, go ahead and leave a like. Drop a comment below. Let me know if this is the same machine that you guys have. Again, mine is the Breville Cafe Roma. I know it's very popular. Links for purchase are down in the description as well. It ranges anywhere between, I think, like 140 to 200, depending on whether or not you're in Canada or the US. And even though this deviates a bit from my other tech videos, I kind of consider this kitchen tech. So we're going to throw this right on the channel. Until the next one, my name is Crazy Dog. You guys have been awesome, and we'll catch you all in the next one. Take care.